I want to talk briefly about Smart Previews in Lightroom 5. This is a new feature and, um, in my opinion, a very nice feature. So a lot of people are doing their editing with a laptop and many laptop hard drives are not large enough to hold large catalogs. You can see we are into May of 2013, or actually we're into June, and I've taken about 24,000 photos and I do not have enough room to store all of those on my hard drive um, in my laptop. So I store them all on an external and that external is called Balsam right here and you can see that it's green which means connected and online. And so I have all of my folders inside that catalog um, that are on that drive. Catalogs can span multiple drives though um, because you can see that there actually is two pictures in the downloads folder. Um, on the hard drive itself. Those are the only two pictures that are physically on the laptop. All of the rest of them exist here in these folders. Now, in the old days, that is to say Lightroom 4 and previous, when you disconnected that drive, none of these images were available to you. You could see the image, uh, but you could not do any editing, rating, um, or especially exporting of the image at all. Now, with Smart Previews, if you build them for your catalog or folders within your catalog that are on an external drive, when you disconnect it, you can still do some editing, most editing, um, rating, tagging, and even exporting. It does have some limitations, so let's look briefly at that. First, let me show you how easy it is to uh, build a smart preview of an image or a folder of images. So I got this image here of this flying dog. Um, he just left a dock over here on the right, but still pretty impressive how high he got. And right here it tells me that I'm working on the original photo. We know I already said that we're connected to this external drive and everything is happy. And if I click this right here, it pops up this and says, do you want to build a smart preview for this photo? It tells me that overall this catalog currently has 228 smart previews totaling 249 megabytes. A smart preview is just what it says, a smart version of this file. It is um, 2500 uh, pixels on its longest side, so it is most likely going to be smaller than your files coming straight out of your camera. Um, it saves them in a lossy DNG format. Now DNG is kind of is Adobe's kind of raw or negative format and lossy does mean that it, there is some compression that happens there. And in in this case, you know, I'm not usually not a fan of compression, but in this case it works very nicely because it allows you to continue working on these files. It keeps them a manageable file size. So I'm going to go ahead and say build a smart preview and we get of course get our little progress indicator up here in the top left. And for one, it's quite quick. And so basically what it's done is built this lossy DNG file um, with 2500 megapixels. And now original plus smart preview is there. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch over to Finder. Right here I have my two external hard drives and I'm just going to disconnect both of those external hard drives. And Spruce is always a little bit slow to disconnect there, but it's going to eject in just a second. And so now you can see that this is grayed out, the green light is gone, and it also tells us that it's offline here. Of course, the hard drive is still online. And we get a little question mark. Now, this image is still here, and the ones next to it um, are still there. But notice that none of these controls are available to me. I can't click on them or do anything, and it just simply says, photo is missing. I can click on it, and it brings up a little thing that says, we can't find it. Do you want to locate it? But if I, can, if I return to the one that I built a smart preview for, it now says smart preview. And these options are still available to me as well as the develop uh, module as well. And so we can come in a little bit closer. And now again, it's not as uh, large and it, uh, you can't zoom as much because this is a smaller file size. So there are some limitations to this but we could bring the highlights down just a little bit, bring the detail out in the white, um, and maybe bring up the clarity just a little bit to really bring out those flying and spraying water drops. Mm, not too much. Otherwise, I think this uh, image is pretty good, but let's just to do a few other things, let's open up our hue saturation, and let's uh, take this green and make it a good bit greener in the background there, so really 
and zoom back out. And that looks pretty nice. And as I said, I can go back to the library. I can actually go through most of my modules here. They're all available to me, even though the original image is not available. And I've already keyworded action, dogs. I can add in pond, jumping. Um, and now when I reconnect that external drive, these of course will have applied themselves to the original image. And as I said, I can even do simple exporting as well. If I bring up my export dialog and bring that over here um, on the side. Now, as I said, the, um, let's see, let's say for Facebook and blog, and that would be fine because the largest size that I have set for exporting out to Facebook and the blog is 2400 pixels on a side and these lossy DNG files are 2500 megapixels so it certainly will fit within that and that's very nice if you're on the road here's how I envision myself using this there are many times where I'm on the road and it would not necessarily do a lot of um, really intensive editing but it would be really nice to be able to go through rate keyword and tag my images and there are quite a few times where it would be nice to be able to throw up an image or two on the blog I certainly don't need the full size resolution for those when I'm sharing online if I'm printing yes I'm gonna want the full resolution but for just sharing online or Facebook uh, I think that the smart preview function is really nice and you can build smart previews for a whole folder and I've done that down here and we can see that it's confused about where this folder is, but all of these images in this folder have been, uh, smart previews have been built. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can select this folder and go into the photo and smart preview build. You can also do this on import. So I'm hitting the import dialog box. And let's say I have this uh, in my pictures folder, I have a group of folders. I hope to show this in a future video using trigger trap motion detect to catch my fat cats. But um, right over here in the file handling when you're building these you can choose to build smart preview. So all at once it will do that. Now this is going to take up more space on your hard drive than not building smart previews because it is creating this little file that represents your larger file. But uh, I think the trade-offs are worth it for most cases and the fact that you can choose to do it for some um, or all of your pictures is a nice option. So that was a quick look at a new feature of Lightroom 5, Smart Previews. I will have more videos coming soon that talk about other new features. The radial gradient tool is really nice as well as the, the healing brush is now actually a brush and not just a spot tool uh, and uh, makes Photoshop even less useful or I shouldn't say useful but less needed and that's a good thing especially since Photoshop is moving to a subscription based model only and we'll talk about that more in a future video too. If you have any questions, comments, or thoughts about Lightroom, Lightroom 5, uh, smart previews, or photo editing tools in general, I have a video that talks about the differences between Photoshop and Lightroom that will be linked down below this video right here. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good night.